Hello everyone, we are the third group of reporters and we're going to discuss uh, the part 2, unit 2, infancy and toddlerhood, uh, module 12, physical development of infants and toddlers. So our primary source for our topic is our book, The Child and Adolescent Learners and Learning Principles. So this is for the subject Aduk 111. So, um, oh, by the way, I'm uh, Jan Lester Abalgos. Oh, welcome to our video presentation. Um, let me also introduce my uh, fellow reporters, my group mates um, named Jessica Bagan and also Isa Marie Armada. So, we have actually just traced the developmental process uh, before birth, so, you know, in previous topics. We should continue to trace the developmental process by the following by following the infant or the baby who is just born up to do to when he reaches age two. The period that comes after the prenatal or antenatal stage is infancy, which in turn is followed by toddlerhood. Um, infancy and toddlerhood span the first two years of life. Um, learning outcomes. So at the end of this module, you should be able to trace the physical development that you have gone through as infants and toddlers. Identify the factors that enhance or impede the physical development of infants and toddlers. Present your own or others' research on physical development of infants and toddlers. And also draw implications of these principles and processes to child care, education, and learning. The cephalocodal trend is the postnatal growth from conception to five months, so when the head grows more than the body. The proximal distal trend is the prenatal growth from five months to birth, uh, when the fetus grows from the inside of the body in the earlier maturation of muscular control of the trunk and arms, followed by that of uh, the hands. So, be, so if you're going to take a look at our figure uh, on the left, so of course your left, <laughs> um, uh, you will see, you know, the differences you know um in the physical characteristics you know of the kid as he grow up as you can see you know of starting from two months five months once he was already born and then on his second year you know there is a drastic change that took place physically as you can see you know on um the far left you know as I believe it's like a two months old um it like it's still he's still in the womb so you would see that you know there is like let's just say it's not real that weird because this is actually a normal thing compared to the adult or a fully grown a person uh, the, the the proportion of you know the the trunk part of the body and then the head is not uh proportionate at all so the the head seems to be larger than the that of the rest of the body begins to grow as well and then as he grows up and up to the second year so he's basically have you know the the, the right uh, proportion from you know head to body proportion you know um his arms and then the legs so height and weight it's normal for newborn babies to drop five to ten percent of their uh, body weight within a couple of weeks of birth that is due to the baby's adjustment uh, to neonatal uh, feeding so once they are adjust to sucking swallowing and digesting they grow rapidly breastfed babies are typically heavier than bottle fed babies through the first six months so after six months breast breastfed babies usually weigh less than bottle fed babies in general an infant's length increases by 30 percent in the first five months and a baby's weight usually uh, triples during the first year but slows down in the second year of life low percentages are not a cause for alarm as long as infants progress along a natural curve of steady development so that's um, about the height and weight, you know, about, you know, the newborn babies, um, the infants, and as well as, you know, as they grow into toddlers. So th there are, let's just say, differences between breastfed babies and bottle-fed babies, as well as in their 
um, height and then their weight and also a you know um, a significant reduction of the rate of growth of the baby as he grows older up to the second year so basically if you know they're still like you know an infant or newborn so they they actually grow up so fast and then as they grow older so the, the rate that the body grows is getting slower and slower as well all right so um brain development um myelina myelination or myelinization the process by which the accents are covered and insulated by layers of fat cells begins prenatally and continues after a birth. The process of myelination or myelinization increases the speed at which information travels through the nervous system. So at birth, the newborn's brain is about 25% of its adult weight. By the second birthday, the brain is about 75% of its adult weight. Shortly after birth, a baby's brain produces trillions more connections between neurons that it can passively use. The brain eliminates connections that are seldom or never used. So the infant's brain is literally waiting for experiences to determine how connections are made. So basically, you know, after birth, trillions of connections you know, are being made between neurons in the brain. So, because that's the time that, you know, um, the baby is actually very open uh, to be taught uh, and they are still learning, you know, about many things. So, about their environment since they're already, you know, outside the womb. Now, however, there's what we call the pruning, uh, wherein, you know, if there are connections that are seldom or never used the brain eliminates those connections already okay so let's just say you know for example if um you are uh, used to like uh, do something and you're actually good at it the more you do something the better you're going to be and doing that specific activity however if you stop doing that thing so basically you're losing so like such connections your reflexes are going to be rusty your brain is somehow going to prune that connection already since that hey you know this person is no longer you know doing this specific activity so i guess it's no longer of use for me so they're going to eliminate that connection and that's it and then you'll just find out one day that you know i'm why am i not, no longer good at this i used to be good at this specific stuff so that's you know uh, what we call the prune pruning you should have you know um have i think a little knowledge about you know um the neurons and the dendrites the axons right okay because among the most dramatic changes in the brain in the first two years of life are the spreading connections of dendrites to each other so remember neurons dendrites axons synapses so you discuss them probably in your general psychology class or science class or maybe in your biology class perhaps back in the years so that's it brain development a study on rats conducted by mark rosenzweig in 1969 revealed that the brains of rats that grew up in their enriched environment developed better than the brains of the animals reared in standard or isolated conditions the brains of the quote unquote enriched animals with more had thicker layers, had more uh, neuronal connections, and had higher levels of neurochemical activity. Such a finding implies that enriching the lives of infants who live in impoverished environments can produce positive changes in their development. So, what does it mean? So, Basically means that, you know, um, if a certain individual, let's just say like babies, because babies are learning fast, you know, when, uh, when they're young. So whatever they see, hear, or, or experience when they're still young, you know, this is going to be routine later years as they grow old. So because that's how uh, a person is being molded, right? So in this, when you're in a specific environment, 
So if you are in a healthy environment, a non-toxic environment, so you are likely to uh, develop positively. You know, it could be cognitively, socially, you are more inclined. Um, you have less behavioral problems. So on the contrary, you know, um, depressed brain activity has been found in children who grew up in a depressed environment. So I mean to say, um, um, if you are growing up or if a, if a toddler or a child grew up or a baby grew up in a toxic environment, a healthy environment, if they were raised in, in an unlikely way, so they are more likely to um, adapt you know, that a pessimism, that negative um, impact um, to their uh, to their brain. Uh, it could be psychologically, it could be socially, um, it could be um, on their behaviors and possibly in their cognitive skills, communication. Yes. So there is a negative impact. Motor development. So along this aspect of motor development, infants and toddlers begin from reflexes to grow motor skills and fine motor skills. So, so again, motor development, the infants and toddlers begin first, you know, from having reflexes because not all reflexes, you know, are, be, are going to be retained as they, you know, as they grow older. Okay, so there are specific, you know, or certain reflexes, GB reflexes, that uh, will just simply go away when they reach a certain age. So, however, um, since they are um, developing the motor skills, so what we have, we have uh, two types of motor skills, the gross motor skills and fine motor skills. Let's discuss first the reflexes. So the newborn has some basic reflexes, which are of course automatic and serve as survival mechanisms you know, before they have the opportunity to learn. So many reflexes which are present at birth will generally subdue within a few months as the baby grows and matures. So that's it. So, uh, you know, um, those uh, reflexes will subside or will just simply go away after a few months or so as they grow older. Like as you can see, for example, on now where our figure is on the left, you know, the baby, you know, a newborn baby starts with just simply lying down. You just possibly be, you know, are able to move their their eyes, their 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 mouth, their their, their limbs. But however, they start to you know raise their full arms or possibly their their legs or maybe even you know try to you know get up uh, and tilt their head um, and also uh, roll over or possibly sit up then crawl stand or possibly walk so that's early baby development so um, that's what we call the gross motor skill so on the other hand below you know um, uh, this toddler is using her hands her fingers wrist her arms you know to try to uh, fit the shapes and do you know these specific puzzles so it does not require a lot of you know of muscles after all so this is actually the, the, what we call the fine motor skills but we'll get into those later on in the next slides. Okay, so let's start with the most common reflexes that babies have. So first is the sucking reflex. The sucking reflex is initiated when something touches the roof of an infant's mouth. Infants have a strong sucking reflex which helps to ensure they can latch onto uh, a bottle or breast. The sucking reflex is very strong in some infants and they may need to suck on a past fiber comfort. So if you have noticed, you know, uh, babies are used to sucking. Um, sometimes, you know, um, if there's nothing in their mouth, um, they just, you know, put their hands or tom um, their mouth and suck on it. So because basically, you know, um, the baby usually needs to feed, you know, because their, their body is growing fast. That's the sucking reflex. So sometimes, um, if 
you just simply you know give them something they just put it in their mouth right away you know, just to suck on it okay so the next one is the root reflex the rooting reflex is most evident when an infant's cheek is stroked um, the baby responds by turning his or her head in the direction of the touch and opening their mouth for feeding so as you would notice the person you know try to stroke the the baby's a uh, left cheek and then the baby started to turn his head or her head to the left as well to try to you know open the mouth on the left side because he's trying to latch his mouth onto something to put something in his mouth and then of course because that's also part of the sucking reflex he needs to feed and for example, if ever that person is going to, you know, uh, touch the other side, the right side of the cheek, so there's a tendency that, or by reflex, the baby is going to turn to his or her right side as well, open his mouth, his or her mouth, and then, you know, try to see if there's something that he can uh, put his uh, mouth onto. So that's it. So gripping reflex, babies will grasp anything that is placed in their palm. The strength of this grip is strong and most babies can support their entire weight in their grip. So um, I think I've already, you know, uh, provided such example before. So say for example, if you give them like a baby toy, they'll just grip on it very tight. How tight in can it be so sometimes you know that tight grip you know on um, this gripping reflex can even support their own weight so that's a very strong you know grip after all okay so a curling reflex so when the inner sole of the foot is stroked so the infant responds by curling his or her toes when the outer sole of the baby's foot is stroked the infant will respond by spreading out their toes okay so this is another test you know this done to babies these are tests being done to babies to figure out or to find out if there are uh, certain uh, neural problems early on you know in their childhood years that can be diagnosed so that can be treated or avoided yeah so that's why you know um, these reflex are being tested to a toddlers or new births. Let's say for example if you go to take a look at um, uh, the the video under curl reflex so uh, the person stroke on the uh, baby's soul and then uh, the toes began to spread out. See? That's it. Okay so startle or moral reflex. So infants will respond to sudden sounds or movements by throwing their arms and legs out and throwing their heads back. Most infants will usually cry when startled and proceed to pull their limbs back into their bodies. I guess it's just pretty normal for you know babies to just to cry. Probably they're you know they're very scared. That's, that's defense mechanism, by the way. For example, if you have noticed, if um, a baby is a slight pain and then all of a sudden they felt a sudden movement or heard as you know um, a sudden possibly like loud noise so they'll they'll be startled and then um, when they startled so they start to you know, spread out their arms and then their legs so, so, so sometimes um, it's also being tested on babies let's just say for example if the baby is lying down and then the person is going to put his uh, hands under the baby's um, head and then raise the baby's head a little and then the baby will feel probably like you know um, unstable so of course if the baby felt unstable so he will try to regain his balance by trying to to find out where the center of mass is so he will try to spread out his arms and legs so that's it next is gland reflex gland reflex is shown when an infant's middle or lower back is stroked next to the spinal cord the bb will respond by curving his or her body toward the side which is being stroked now as you can see this is actually the actual test being done 
uh, the person uh, tried to stroke at the back of the baby, you know, on the right side, and then the baby curves to the right side as well. And then he stroked to the left side, the baby tends to bend to his left side as well. See? That's it. All right. Tonic neck reflex. So tonic neck reflex is demonstrated in infants who are placed in the, on their abdomens. Whichever side the child's head is facing, the limbs on that side will straighten, while the opposite limbs will curl. So this is also what um, they call uh, the fencing reflex. You know, because the baby is doing like, you know, like a fencing posture. Have you seen someone or a picture of someone doing fencing? So um, on, the, on the other side, the arms and the legs are spread out. And then on the other side, uh, they, are, they are curled up. So where, wherever the, the head of the, the baby is facing, so that's where the side, you know, you know where the limbs are actually stretched. Okay, so we're here. So, um, what are the two types of motor skills? So, the first one is the gross motor skill. So, what I said before, so motor skills, is to say, for example, the baby, you know, starts from this lying down and then rolls over, you know, probably tries to sit up and then they start to, you know, um, stand on their own or probably, you know, walks on their own. Even just, you know, trying to do one step at a time, so that's it. So that's gross motor skills. Because what is gross motor skills? These require, you know, um, large muscles, you know. So it is always a source of excitement, you know, about it, for parents to witness dramatic changes in the infant's first year of life. This dramatic motor development is shown in babies unable to even lift their heads to be able to grab things off the cabinet, to chase the ball, and to walk away from Okay, so uh, these, you know, are physical, you know, activities, you know, or skills require, you know, um, greater effort from the muscles, bigger muscles, you know, um, large, a number of muscles as well. So on the contrary, we have the um, fine motor skills. So fine motor skills are skills that involve a refined use of the small muscles, controlling the hand, fingers and thumb. The development of these skills allows one to be able to complete tasks such as writing, drawing, and botany. The ability to exhibit fine motor skills involve activities that involve precise eye-hand coordination. The development of reaching and grasping becomes more refined during the first two years of life. Initially, infants show only crude shoulder and elbow movements but later they show wrist movements hand rotation and coordination of uh, of the two um so for example if you're going to give a child like you know certain activities like toys that you know like puzzles or some sort or let them draw um something so that's actually those are actually requiring a fine motor skills so they would try to grasp one you know um a pencil or a crayon and then try to scribble on the paper and that's it so simple uh motor skills it doesn't require any effort all right, so I'll be uh, passing the virtual mic to my colleague here, and she will discuss about research findings regarding newborns. Her name is Jessica. So Jessica, take on the floor. Hello everyone. Hello Miss. Good day. This is Jessica Bagon. I will discuss to you the research findings regarding newborns. First question here is, can newborns see? The newborn vision is about 10 to 30 times lower than normal adult vision. 
by 6 months of age, vision becomes better, and by the first birthday, the infant's vision approximates that of an adult. It is by Banks of Salapatik 1983 cited by Suntrack 2002. Infants look at different things for different lengths of time. In an experiment conducted by Robert Fans in 1963 cited by Suntrack 2002, it was found that infants preferred to look at patterns such as faces and concentric circles rather than of color or brightness. Based on these results, it is likely that patterns' perceptions has an innate basis. It is by Suntrack 2002. Among the first few things that babies learn to recognize is their mother's face as the mother feeds. Second question here is, can newborns hear? The sense of hearing in an infant develops much before the birth of the baby. When in the womb, the baby hears his or her mother's heart beats, the grumbling of his or her stomach, the mother's voice, and music. How soothing it must have been for you to listen to your mother's lullaby. Infants' sensory thresholds are somewhat higher than those of adults which means that the stimulus must be louder to be heard by newborn than by an adult. Next question is... Can newborns differentiate others? In an experiment conducted by Mark Farling in 1975, young infants who were breastfed showed a clear preference for smelling their mother's breast pad when they were six days old. This preference did not show when the babies were only two days old. This shows that it requires several days experience to recognize their mother's breast pad odor. Can newborns feel pain? Do they respond to touch? Well, of course, yes, they do feel pain. Newborn males show a higher level of cortisol or an indicator of stress after circumcision than prior to the surgery by Tadeo et al. in 1997, cited by Suntrack 2002. And... Babies respond to touch in the earlier part of this module on motor development. You learn that a newborn automatically sucks on an object placed in his or her mouth or a touch of the cheek makes the newborn turn his or her head to toward the side that was touched in an apparent effort to find something to suck. And the last question here is, do infants relate information through several senses? Or in short, are infants capable of intermodal perception? Intermodal perception is the ability to relate, connect, and integrate information about two or more sensory modalities such as vision and hearing. 
In a study conducted by Spelke and Osley in 1979, it was found that as early as three and a half months old infants looked at their mother when they also heard her voice and longer at their father when they also heard his voice. This capacity for intermodal perception or the ability to connect information coming through various modes gets sharpened considerably through experience. So, this is all for the research findings regarding newborns. The next is a summary of what infants and toddlers can do physically. It will discuss to you by Miss E. Summary. Good day po. This is Isa Marie Armada and I will going to continue our report. This is all about a summary of what infants and toddlers can do physically. There are th three domains, the physical health, well-being, and then the motor development. In physical health, the child around 0 to 6 months and even in 7 to 12 months, they're just the same. The child starters to loud sounds, visually follows a moving object from side to side and reacts to pain by crying. There are also withdraws or cries when in contact with something hot or cold. There are also reacts with pleasure smiles or relaxed expression when he or she tastes something delicious. And then in the 13 to 18 months, they usually play without tiring easily and also to able to keep pace with playmates. And then in 19 to 20, 24 months, they sustain physical activity like dancing, outdoor games, swimming for at least 3 to 5 minutes. While in motor skills development or the gross motor skills, in the 0 to 6 months, they usually hold heads steadily. They move arms and legs equally to reach or dangling objects seats with support starting to crawl not yet very good at this when they are around 7 to 12 months they can sit alone steadily without support creeps or crawls with ease as a primary means of moving around they can stand without support they can squat from a standing position with ease they can bend over easily without falling and also they can walk sideways by holding into the sides of crib or furnitures. They can also walk with a one hand help. While in 13 to 18 months, they can walk without support. They can walk backwards. They can walk up the strays with hand help, two feet on each step, jump in place, clamp into and steady elevated surface like bed, adult chair, or banco. They can kick a ball, throw a ball, and maintain a balance like walking, narrow ledge between two lines without assistance. Moves with music when he hears it. Can move body to imitate familiar animals. And can move body to imitate another person or baby color character. In 19 to 24 months, the child can walk up the stairs with alternating feet without help, walks down the stairs with alternating feet without help. They can kick a ball with control of direction, throws a ball with control of direction. They can also throw a ball with control of speed. While in motor skills development, or the fine motor skills, the child around 0 to 6 months, the hands open most of the time, brings both hands together toward tangling object or the toy. They uses 
either hand interchangeable to grasp the object. When they are around 7 to 12 months, they can pull toys by the string. They can pick up objects with thumb and index finger. They can grasp and transfer objects from hand to hand. When they are in around 13 to 18 months, they can put small objects in and out of the container. They can unscrew leads. They can also unwrap candy or the food. They can also hold a stick pencil or crayon with the palmar grip. When they are around 19 to 24 months, color with strokes going out of the line. And the last one is the personal care and the hygiene or the activities of daily living. When they are around 0 to 6 months, they can suck and swallow milk from breast or bottle. They begin to take complementary or semi-solid foods by the end of the 6 months. They can also keep reasonable still while being dressed, undressed, bath, and while the diaper is being changed. While they are in 7 to 12 months, they can hold a feeding bottle by themselves. They help to hold a cap for drinking. They choose a solid food well, feeds, feeds their self with finger foods. They can also scoop with spoon with spillage. When they are around 13 to 18 months, they can feed with self with assistance. They feed self using fingers to eat rice, viand, with spillage. They can also feed self using a spoon. They no longer drink from feeding battle. They can drink from cup also. They participate with being dressed by lifting arms or raising legs. They take a bath with assistance. They brush their teeth after meals with assistance from an adult. They can also wash the dry hand under the adult, adult supervision. They can also wash the dry face with the assistance of an adult. When they are around 19 to 24 months, they can get strength for herself unassisted. They can remove loose sandals. They can remove socks. They can also brush their teeth after meals with adult supervision. They can also wash and dry their face under adult supervision. They can also go to the designated place to urinate but sometimes wets his or her pants. They can inform a caregiver of the need of urinate so he or she can brought to the comfort room. And that is also the end of our report about the physical development of infants and toddlers. Thank you for listening.